This is the MSI RX470 Gaming X Edition. It's got the standard MSI Twin Throws like a Fire Operation. Visually a beautiful card to look at. Unfortunately, because it's lowered down the tier, it does not feature a backplate, which I'm not very happy about for the price point. But let's go ahead and jump in and look at those benchmarks and wrap it up with a conclusion. Okay, so we've had a brief look at the card. There's more HD, better pictures on the website, as always, or Google image. You should know what the card looks like. But let's answer that question. Is it worth your money? And the answer simply is no. Um, let me be clear, that is not a dig at MSI. This whole issue is a bit of a complex one, so let's try and break it down and understand what's going on. Again, to be clear, that is not a perk at MSI. The whole RX 470 and 480 launch has not been handled correctly and in turn this card just doesn't have the appeal that it should. So let's try and backtrack and make sense of where I'm coming from. The RX 480 launch, while there was a lot of hype and interest around it and the card is good, um, availability, pricing, confusion about the 4 gig or the 8 gig model, availability from the uh, third party suppliers like MSI and all the other brands, it just wasn't handled that well. Um, so let's just try and put that to the side and say that wasn't great. But then when the RX470 came to market, again, the lead up was interesting, but there was much confusion about release dates, price points, would it be four gig, would it be eight gig? When would the vendors have a choice to put their models out? Again, it just wasn't handled properly. And the appeal just isn't there because the issue is pricing and that is AMD's fault. It, you could see all oh, the brands are pricing their cards too high. They can only price them you know, as equal or as near to each other as possible. There just isn't a great deal of wiggle room in this 200 pound or below region because the RX 480 is priced not that far away. But let's focus on this card. It's a four gigabyte card. It's retailing for 191 pounds on one retailer. For £20 more, you can double up your memory and have a backplate. So, I mean, it's just not logical enough. Uh, this card, to me, and it's going to sound odd, but I'm going to say what I think. It seems to only exist to make the 8GB card more appealing. Because if it didn't exist and it was the 8GB card only out there, you might start looking further down the tier and leaning towards the NVIDIA cards or something older from AMD. So it really seems like AMD just thought, well, if we push this card out as well, it'll make the eyes lean towards, you know, the 8 gigabyte version of this, or it may tempt the consumer even more so and say, well, actually it's a good card, but I'm actually gonna save up and go for the RX 480. So yes, it's an interesting review. I have to applaud MSI for what they've done with the card. They've pre-overclocked it. They've put their epic cooling solution on there. It's super cool and quiet, lower power draw. Overclocking, it is what it is. It's just not been that exciting lately with the Nvidia and the AMD stuff. There is a little bit wiggle room. Go ahead and play it if you want. But I'm just not excited about the card and it's the pricing. If this had been a little bit lower, I could justify it and say those are on a tighter budget or they're only playing some titles that really don't need the extra four gigs. Go ahead and buy it. But as it stands, it's just not competitive enough. Now, if you're watching this video in six months time and you think, what on earth is he talking about? There's a massive price difference between the four gig and the eight gigabyte card. And of course, disregard what I'm saying, but for now, based on the facts on today, it's not competitive enough. So until it changes, just give this one a miss.